reading this, what I wrote before the show, Ken, I just can't even believe it. Can't believe I'm saying this about Pedro Gomez. You, you knew him when he was with the Arizona Republican breaking in, right? Tell us about Pedro. Sure, we're the same age, and we came up at the same time, had similar experiences, stayed in touch over the years, and when I saw that news come over Twitter last night, that was as crushing and deflating a thing as I can remember in a long time. And I love my job, I love coming to work, but it was tough coming in today. Yeah. And knowing how close he was to his family, knowing how proud he was of his family, of his Cuban heritage, everything about him. You see the outpouring on Twitter today from so many of us. But what you glean out of that is that a lot of us thought, ah, Pedro's a good friend of mine. He was a good friend to everybody. Right, right. And it comes across, and he was kind and generous. And I know often people say nice things after someone passes. No, this guy, he was special. Yeah. He was a light among us. And to think he's gone, to think that he'll never see his son, Rio, one of his three children, possibly pitch in the majors, or at least at a higher level in the minors, it's devastating to me. Because as you mentioned, Brian, in your essay, Pedro would talk endlessly about that. And Rio was a 36th round pick of the Red Sox, but he's already gotten to high A. Yeah. Which, in my mind, means he's beaten the odds already. And who knows? A left-hander who throws 91-92 has got a chance. We know that. But now to think that he won't see Rio advance and he won't see his other two kids and his wife Sandy and the whole thing, it's just devastating. There's no other word for it's it. It's difficult to fathom, right, even as it's we're talking about it now. And you saw him when he was on the beat reporter too. I did. Still playing, uh, Dan, right? I was traded over the Arizona Diamondbacks in May of 1999, and that's when I first met Pedro. And as Ken touched on, uh, we, had, we had so many conversations over the years at the World Series, at the winter meetings. I would run into him at spring training. He would always ask me how my daughters were doing, and we always had that conversation about our kids. And, it, and it's really eerie because three days ago, I had a little interaction with him on social media. He had a picture with he and his son from when his son was really young. And, you know, I had made the, the comment like, you know, the, there's the picture with he and Rio. <laughs> and, you know, I made, you know, the comment like time goes so fast. And, you know, he replied back to me, make sure you tell your daughters that I said hi. And when the news came last night, it, it was like, you know, there – when you're as a player, you, you, you look at the media and you, you look at things differently. And, you know, he was a guy that when I played, he had respect for me and I had respect for him back. And he was a guy that loved baseball. Mm -hmm. But Brian, baseball loved him back, too. Right. He was he was unique. I yeah, there's a couple of things that popped into my head in that. Uh, right. When you did interact with him and then when I wasn't working with him, but I would just see him out when I came here to the network and I would see him out at different places. You'd always have that interaction. You'd be smiling. You'd be laughing. He's high energy, fun guy to be around. Um, he always would see me and say, BK Lounge, the BK Lounge. And I would, I would give him the Barry Bonds treatment. Barry, remember, would, would sit there, and he'd look around, and he'd see all the reporters, and he'd say, Gomez. You know, so I was always like, Gomez. You know, like, always dig that into him there. But he had Barry's respect in what was a brutal job to go out there every day and be questioning Barry Bonds. What is he doing today? Is he angry with the media? But again, he handled it with, with dignity and respect and treated Barry Bonds with respect, and that respect went both ways. In a situation like that, the most difficult thing for a reporter is to keep your cool. And he kept his cool. He always, in that environment with Barry and everything that was going on, he stayed professional. And hey, as a writer, before his ESPN days, when he was with the Arizona Republic, he wrote a column before Game 7 of the 2001 World Series. Now, he's covering the Diamondbacks for the Arizona Republic as a columnist, and he wrote a column basically saying Kurt Schilling was something of a con man. Kurt Schilling was starting that game. Ooh. There had been an incident earlier in the series with Brenly, with Schilling, the whole thing. That took a lot of courage to do, and that's the hardest thing to do is to kind of rip a hometown player in your hometown before they're about to win their first World Series or could win their first World Series. He did it. He handled that with professionalism. That was his opinion, and he stood by it, and he had all of our respect before and well after that. And I guess, uh, you know, if you see out there as fans and you, you follow, you know, different media people and writers and that sort of thing, and you can see this outpouring of, of emotion, you know, this is why. This is how, th that's, that's the legacy. That's what you bring. Absolutely that He affected right. so many people that he was close with, and then people that you, they just worked with, and that was a wide range of people. A young writer he might run into once or twice but was nice to. That means a ton. Yeah. 
because when we were coming up, not everybody was nice to us. So <laughs> but Pedro remembered, and, yeah. and he, he was a special person. Yeah, good man. Uh, Pedro Gomez, again, uh, leaving us way too early. Pedro Gomez was 58 years old. We'll take a break. We're back on MLB Now in a moment.